Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Death Mark 2, which is a Japanese horror game, and the third game in the Death Mark series. And like the previous games, you go around investigating ghost stories and curses, and hopefully, a terrible fate does not befall you. そこ今夜花子がお前を殺す。私は見ている。学園に紛れ。親愛なる死人。きっと果たして、Hey, tell me the rest of the story. We got cut off in the middle, remember? I've been thinking about during class ever since. The story? You mean... about that... the departed thing? Yeah, that one. Yeah, I think your, uh... student there on the left is from They Live. Is it really here at school? Obviously, duh. The part turns itself into a human to kill us. Damn. Doesn't that mean we're like... In danger? That would imply you're in danger, yes. You know, Takai and 2B? They're supposedly missing. But everyone's been saying they got killed by the departed. Just like the notes on the bulletin board said. Wait, hold on. Don't tell me. Remember the second year? You think the departed killed them too? Could be. Y'all need to stop spreading rumors. That means... that the parents are cause of all the strange things happening at the school lately. That's really crazy. You know... Maybe you're their next target. Thanks, friend. H hey Knock it off! You're creeping me out! If anything, it's probably gonna be you first. I think it's gonna be all of you. Cause my grades are better than yours. The heck? That's not how it works. Right? After that, the student's conversation detours onto the topic of some popular TV shows. They're chatting merrily, the unpleasant subject they broached earlier cast aside. For them, a spooky story about someone's death is probably just another form of mindless entertainment. Entertainment. They're just rumors, after all. The sound of a bell rings loudly in my ears. It must be coming from the school's clock tower. The students are apparently desensitized to it, as hardly any of them react to its sound. It's almost time for my appointment.
I enter Konoehara Academy for the main gate. Then I head to the appointed building on the outskirts of the school grounds. So if you haven't seen this series before, it may look basically like a visual novel, but it's it's an actual game game. Once aside, I quickly consult the guide map at the entrance. The faculty room seems to be this way. There are some teachers left in the office. I ask one of them to call the headmaster, Konoe. Yari yari. Yeah, yeah, it is a... You, uh, you're wearing the, uh, classic Joker colors, huh? Oh my, so you really came. Welcome to Konohara Academy. I'm Seizo Konoe, headmaster of the school. Mr. Konoe smiles, decked out in a flashy suit, designed to call attention to the implied amount of money it costs its owner. We spoke on the phone once before I came here, but this is our first in-person interaction. I'm sorry for calling you on short notice. Um, what's your name again? Age has really done a number on my memory. Let me introduce myself again then. My name is... So, you can rename your character. I never really quite got the point of that, but I keep at the default. Yoshi. My name is Kazuo. Yashiki. Oh yes, that's right. Terribly sorry. I heard about you from one of our teachers, Diamond. He mentioned your name when I discussed the departed with him. You are apparently quite versed in matters of the occult. Are you an exorcist, perchance? No, not at all. I just happen to stumble into strange happenings a lot more than the average person. And that's it. And I've also exorcised them. It's just a coincidence. I'm nothing compared to professional. Despite, you know, handling some of the most dangerous things out there. I, I'm, not, I'm not professional, by the way. Oh, really? But you've solved supernatural cases before, have you not? Well, yes, I have. I just got lucky, I'm telling you. I really don't have any special techniques or anything like that. I don't know what to make of you. The headmaster pointedly raises his eyebrows. I don't blame him for feeling doubtful or suspicious. I got tangled up in some bizarre incidents, and I found myself in life or death situations several times. Fortunately, I've managed to survive with some resourcefulness. That's not really all there is to it. I'm not some kind of subject matter expert like the headmaster wants. But Diamond is a trustworthy man whose opinion I respect. If he vouches for you, then I shall do my best to trust you. Besides, I have no time to find an alternative. Especially considering that we found a new notice this afternoon. He pulls out a piece of paper. I take it from him. This is the departed's notice. The red fingerprints on it. Could it be blood? Oh, that. I've heard that's mold, not a blood stain. You sure about that? I'm not familiar with mold of that hue, however. I open the letter and skim through it. Dear pianist, Hanako will kill you tonight. I'm watching hiding in the school. Your beloved, the departed. That's the second notice we've gotten. I told you about the first one during our call. It was addressed to Ribbon, right? I believe so. Something seems to have happened to it. It's nowhere to be found now. 
The previous headmaster got scolded by the cops because it got missing. Just as the note was predicted, the student named it and it vanished. And you think it was the part it's doing? No, I don't believe in ghosts and the like. I assume these kids have simply gone missing, but... But quite a lot of people believe it was the part it's doing. I'm reminded of the conversation I overheard at the front gate. Rumors about the departed seems to be spreading among the students. And that's why I called you. Even our most anxious pupils should be relieved when they see that we have an expert looking into the situation. Once again, I must remind you that I'm not an expert. Well, play the part then. Investigate the school tonight and inform the students that there's no such thing as the departed. That should be enough to ass assuage the fears of the superstitious folks. He may claim the Depart doesn't exist, but we won't know the truth of the matter until we investigate. I'll go along with him for tonight and see what I can find. The Headmaster and I wait until night. So I'm going to go over the premise of this series a little bit in a second. I kind of want to like hit to some kind of gameplay point. Some time has passed since the sunset. The headmaster and I are the only ones left. Not a student or teacher in sight. We've waited long enough. Let's look around. School at night's a rare privilege, eh? And do it while you can, Yashiki. We'll leave the faculty room and begin searching the special building. We visit the infirmary, library, and the student council room. We don't find anything unusual. It's unseasonably cold, no. Autumn is barely upon us. Yep, that's just ghosts. If I'd known to be like this, I would have dressed more warmly. So why is the headmaster patrolling the school, anyway? You could have had one of your younger teachers handle it. Really now, think about it. Do you think I could request that a teacher work overtime to search for ghosts? <laughs> Nonsense. I don't know, I think they'd do it for fun. And since I've only recently been installed as headmaster, I can't exactly cajole anyone into doing the job. I'm left with no choice but to push my own bones to see to it myself. He heaves a big sigh. I guess being the newcomer at school always has drawbacks, even for a headmaster. Anyway, let's go to the new building next. Follow me, Yashiki. Leaving the special building, we walk through the corridor and head to the new building. Let's investigate the first floor of the new building. We usually lock the classrooms, but I've requested to remain unlocked just for tonight. Inspect the rooms as you need. I'll leave the expert to do his work. He's really pushing this expert thing. Denying it is getting annoying, and seeing that it's not having any effect, I decide to simply ignore it now. Shall we begin the investigation? Let's start with the first year classrooms. Yeah, okay. So let's go over this series a little bit. Alright, we have stats. In the previous games, these stats didn't necessarily matter too much. They're more of a roleplay thing to kind of give you an idea what this character would probably be good at. But, this is a very different game. They have done some mix-up. So I'm not sure maybe these stats do matter now. Strength, Intelligence, Dexterity, Spiritual Power, 12. The Headmaster here actually has decent spiritual power. Intelligence is higher than us. And your Dexterity. Oh my god. We need to work out. Let's so look in the file. They rival the Death Noah sent by Mysterious Entity. The Depart as Konohara Konohara Academy in a commotion. The Noah denotes a murderer and their target. Since the murderer's name is Hanako, it leads the students to believe it's the spirit of the urban legend. Hanako of the Toilet. 
After the notices arrived, some of the students actually went missing, but police could not intervene due to the lack of any obvious crime. However, as the rumors took a toll on the students, I was hired to conduct an investigation. I have to determine if this is the work of spirits or merely a prank. Spirits. Character file. So this is going to be a little throwback for people. Protagonist, the man who came to Konohara Kami after receiving a request to investigate the departed is actually Mazumune Kujo, head of the famous Kujo family, but now goes by an alias. After a bizarre case a few months ago, he was dubbed by an occult magazine, The Spirit Doctor. The age headmaster of Konohara Academy soon after his appointment, rumors about the Depart ran wild, forcing him to take action. He asked the protagonist to investigate. He's witty, well-educated, and well-connected, and quite well-off. Items. Okay. Favorite bag. Yashiki's <laughs> favorite item. A large brand of lever shoulder bag made in Europe. Can hold plethora items. Effect, plus 1% to execution rate of suspensive acts. Gift from sister. Konoe's favorite item. A tip made of tea pin made in pure silver with clear crystal attached on the base. Effect two, plus two spiritual power. Okay, so let's start doing some stuff here. So previous death mark games, they were purely first person, like a per first person adventure game or like a dungeon crawler. This one, they've done a... Basically, it's a little more like a 2D adventure game now. But I'm assuming the gameplay is a little bit similar. There's probably some changes. Darkness is spread outside the window. My eyes are slowly acclimating to the darkness. And I start to vaguely distinguish trees standing nearby. And if you haven't seen the previous games, it goes Death Mark, then Spirit Hunter NG. Uh, both are very good. The first game is more important to understand the characters and context here, but the second also has some lore stuff. Oh, there's a character here. I see a girl dressed in a school uniform. Oop, wrong one. What's the student still doing here? Strange. Who are you? You have an interesting mark in your face. Almost like a death mark. Hello. Don't worry. I'm not breaking in. Your headmaster's right here behind me. Ah. It looks like she's less tense now. Guess I managed to reassure her. She has a mark on her left cheek. A mysterious mark that looks like a pattern. Is it natural? Um, can you stop staring at me like that? Oh, sorry about that. Aren't you from the student council? Yes, my name is Himeko Doryu. School grounds are closed. What are you doing here? Doryu falls silent after the headmaster confronts her. It seems like she's got a reason, but she's hesitant to talk. Let's chat. Um, actually, I'm looking for Izumi. I can't find him anywhere. He's dead. And that's not a spoiler. I mean, I'm just assuming he's probably dead. Who's Izumi? Toshihiko Izumi from the student council. You discover topics of conversation during the course of investigation. Discuss topic. The Departed. Everyone's talking about it. The Departed's roaming around the school. They're issuing death notices. Or the person named the notice is killed by Hanako. Do you believe those rumors? Yes, because someone was actually killed. <laughs> Would you mind correcting what you said, or you? No one is dead. They simply ran away from home. Huh, interesting. Hanako. 
That's the name of the notice, isn't it? They all say Hanako's true identity is Hanako the Toilet. That name sounds familiar. Is that the name of the female spirit? Hanako the Toilet is the spirit of a girl with bobbed hair and a red skirt. She usually appears in the school restrooms. Well, she is Hanako of the Toilet for a reason. Do you know anything else? Um, I don't know much more than that. I try not to pay too much attention to it, since this kind of stuff really freaks me out. Her body's shaking. She must be terrified. Can't say that comes as a surprise. Toshihiko Izumi. Izumi left the student council room and didn't return even after school closed. So the vice president is searching for him now. He looked around the new building and the special building, but can't find him anywhere. Did you mention this to the teacher? N no I thought we'd find him quickly. And now that the school's closed, it'd be even harder to tell them. Do you have any clues? Like the last thing he said to you, or anything like that? Doryu steals a glance at me, seemingly hesitant to answer the question. You may not believe it. He looked pale before he left. And then he said, The departed is calling me. Oh yeah, he's dead. Come again? Can I go back on this and the subject changes, or no? No, okay, it's the same thing. Uh... Doryu has given up trying to mask her emotions as she looks straight at us. I don't know who you are, but you'd better give up. Give up on what? The Departed. If you get curious about the Departed's true identity, you'll become their target. It's not the first time. I just hope they're as pretty as the previous ones. That's what they say. She seems to adamantly believe that the departed exists. Now I see why the headmaster was worried about trying to calm the students down. He didn't want more of them ending up like this. You should just go home, Doryu. We'll look for Izumi. Uh, understood. I'll get going then. Things are getting more complicated, hmm? Let's switch to Izumi first and save the matter of the Departed for later. Which reminds me, you're not familiar with this school yet. Just ask me if you're unsure where to go. Party chat. No, Jimmy. Okay, so that's essentially the gameplay loop of the Deathmark series. It's investigating, talking to people, finding items and stuff, and hopefully not dying to encounters and things on the way. Because each chapter is building up to a climax of encountering the spirit you're investigating. And if you're not prepared for it, you will... Either you'll die or someone with you will die. And that kind of usually determines the ending. This is not really a spoiler, by the way. I mean, there could be changes in this version, but this is just the gameplay loop of, like, this entire series. There's a sturdy, well-made lectern and podium for the teachers here. I can imagine a teacher standing here and lecturing their students. So you are really an exorcist in a lot of ways. I mean, you don't have powers, like he says, but you do have intuition, investigative skills, and stuff like that. The desk will line up perfectly. Just a cell alone is all you need to get a feel for the school's prestige. There's a large bulletin board here. This is where the first notice was posted. When I move the papers around, I find a stab wound on the board that looks like it was made with a knife. Looking closely at, I can see some faint red marks. I wouldn't have called you if there wasn't a notice here. This is the main entrance of the new building. The school gate is right ahead. Shoe lockers for the students are placed near the entrance. Yoshi. 
Notice for students are posted on the bulletin board. Students, please avoid loitering at the school. Head home as soon as classes are over. It's an inevitable measure considering all the strange incidents that have occurred. As nerve-wracking as it is, this is a necessary precautionary measure. This is the female restroom, a place forbidden to men and boys. Hmm. Considering Doryu's personality, I doubt she ever considered looking for a boy in here. She may not have searched here, but... It would not be inappropriate for us to enter this place. It's for the investigation. I'm a paranormal cop. Well, you're not wrong. But this is an emergency. We need to investigate here as well. No one will find out if we keep it between us. No one's gonna care. God, someone's already dead. All of a sudden, the light goes out. As if somebody's trying to prevent us from entering this place. No way. Is there something lurking here? Oh goodness, did it go out again? The headmaster responds nonchalantly. Electricity's been acting up lately. It's not the first time this has happened. That's because you've got ghosts! I would know I'm a paranormal cop. I tried to get it fixed, but it's not easy to book an appointment with a repairman these days. Anyway, you need not trouble yourself. There's nothing mystical about it. We're not being hot or whatever you call it in your line of work. Still though, it's hard to see in the dark. Hold on a sec. Open my bag and take out my flashlight. Someone's well prepared, eh? Investigating in the dark is something a spirit hunter like you must be skilled at. A, a flashlight is well prepared? Ah, oh, I see. Well, he kind of like or turns up his uh, light automatically like that. So if you have noticed, I've been kind of avoiding talking about the previous game's stories. I do want to keep that a little unspoiled. Maybe if I get a couple episodes in, I'll talk about it a little more. But just in case someone's coming in really fresh, I'm trying to be a little more vague about it. I can faintly see a pale reflection of my face in the mirror. Are you tired? You look dead inside. Like your soul's in the trash can. It does upset me how the pro tag of this series uh, does look eerily like me. That's one clean toilet. Okay, so they still have some first person stuff. The toilet bowl is spotless. No dirt at all. I feel uneasy about peering inside toilet bowls. Even though I have to. Yep, no person there. How about here, a person? Person? Huh. We got something. A red mark is lying on the floor. Have you noticed the writing on the wall? But this is what they used to write. Can't believe they left the evidence after scribbling on the wall. They're going to damage the school's reputation. Mr. Konoe, why don't I keep this marker? You want to keep it? Yeah, it may be related to our investigation. This is nothing but a rule of thumb, but... Usually when items are found at a spirit's hideout, they're tied to that spirit. Even a seemingly ordinary marker like this can be a clue. Fine, do what you want. Investigating spirits sure is troublesome work, eh? Even have to pick up things like this. Hmm. He's writing here. Upon close inspection, I notice that there are traces of something scribbled on the wall. I should be able to make out some of it. Disgusting, annoying, just die already. Well, I can't read the name, someone's obviously being bad enough pretty harshly. 
Ja. Ja, yep, that's a ghost. Just in the toilet suddenly flushes. Say, has Toilet ever been acting weird too? No, I've not heard any such reports. You probably just accidentally touched the lever. While the water was flowing, I heard a voice. The voice of a girl saying, give it back. And I felt like I had energy drained from my body. I don't think I just imagined that. Did the spirit just contact me? Yes, yeah, so that's another aspect of this series. Essentially, you're, you're you're supposed to investigate, but you can investigate too much and just trigger little jump scares that like lower your health. Don't you think we've investigated enough here? I feel really uncomfortable. Let's leave. Why is this one closed? Yoshi. Oh, and there's toilet cleaning equipment. The mop, mop. The brushes are neatly lined up. Better not mess with them. Character file. So you are definitely cursed. Himiko Doryu, a quiet girl with a large mark on her face. A second year at Konayahara and the student council president, she has a quiet demeanor and isn't much for talking. She's also terrified of ghost stories. She balances her studies, work, and exercise well. So you notice I'll say entry incomplete, because they're going to update as we go for the chapter. And if they die, which people aren't necessarily guaranteed to die, it's a lot of it's your actions, they definitely update. Piano. The sound of piano reverberates through the building. I didn't hear anything. It must be your imagination. You clearly heard that. Where's the music room? Hmm? Um... It's right ahead. Might as well check out the dudes. I see a pale reflection of my face in the mirror. The urinal appears to be clean with no visible stains. It's really clean. Yeah, it's a little unusual actually here. Eyeball? Mm -hmm. Oh, because we're not a flashlight. Hmm. Now that we've checked all the toilet bowls, did you manage to gain any useful info, Yashigi? You call me out. Mop. Mop. Here we go. I enter the music room and scan the place. However, no one is here. See? Nobody's here. You really are just imagining things. There's no possible way you heard the piano. We've finally reached a logical conclusion. <laughs> you know, except for ghosts. His triumphant voice echoes off the walls of the empty room. Is there really no one here? Better check the place out to be sure. There are portraits of famous musicians on the wall. Some smiling, some frowning. Their eyes won't move no matter how long you stare at them. Yosh. Yosh. There's a black grand piano. Does this thing really make a sound just now? Let's take a closer look. Inspect item. A vintage piano fitting for a school with such a long history. Its elegant appearance with muted polish really makes it the centerpiece of this room. The lid is open. I should be able to play the piano then. Flick. I reach my fingers toward the piano keys. Perfect.
Yep, we just pissed off the ghost of our terrible playing. Ah! Don't storm me like that, Yashiki. I thought my heart was going to stop. <sighs> my, my word. But sorry about that. Hey, you notice all those things are gone? It isn't just the headmaster. I'm feeling ill after playing the piano as well. Suddenly a portrait falls at the other end of the room. It's too much to be a coincidence. It may be a spiritual phenomena. I should examine further. It's locked. The door won't open. The portrait hanging in the wall has fallen. And it was right after I played the piano. What unusual timing. It was not a coincidence. What's going on here? Hmm. There's a poster on the floor. It must have come unglued from the nearby bulletin board. Curious, I pick it up. The Dejan Brass Band Club members notice of a change of lead. I'd like to inform you that the pianist for the recital of our school song of the upcoming ceremony has been changed. Previous Hanako, new Izumi. It's a clue. This isn't good. If the department's notice is real, then Izumi may be the target. Slow down, Yashiki. You have some rationale for that claim, correct? Izumi is a pianist. It's written the notice. They'll kill the pianist. And Izumi is a pianist. That's just a coincidence. The Departed doesn't exist. Izumi, a pianist, has been worried about the Departed. And now he's disappeared the same day the notice arrived. Do you really think this is all a coincidence? <sighs> the hamster abruptly starts coughing. His face is drenched in sweat. He's so pale, he looks like he could collapse at any moment. Are you alright? Far from it. I can barely breathe. My heart is racing. Forget Brandy. I just want to drink some water and calm down. Sorry, but can you let me rest in the infirmary for a spell? The infirmary is in the special building. Guess we better go there. Events are in the Brass Band Club. S smells kind of moldy. Is it just because the papers have been posted here for a long time? So it is a mold. Hmm. Oh, there's a sprint feature. How long can we sprint? We are... we are worn out. We'll leave the new building and go back to the special building. Once there, we head to the infirmary. The infirmary looks the same as the one you'd find in any school. It's a great place to get a drink of water. Lie down for a break. Let's talk to the headmaster in a bit. I want to record my progress first. We'll talk first. Now finally, break time. Sorry for troubling you. What do you want to ask? Chat. Oh my, I'm absolutely shattered right now. Who would have thought I'd need to deal with this sort of thing so soon after I was appointed? Yeah. Huh. When did you get here? Just a few days ago. I mean... No, I mean if you're a player character, usually the player characters are, uh... I mean, they, they could still be involved, but they're not necessarily, like, villains. I was supposed to be installed here next year. But it happened early on account of the previous headmaster's collapse. Convenient. I've told you all I know. I want to put an end to this whole the departed situation as soon as possible. Many students overreact to the spiritual nonsense, rumors of the supernatural no basis in reality. You talking about Doryu? She's one of them. Better than others, though. Some even skip class because they believe they may be targeted. I want to clear this rubbish from their minds so they can focus on their schoolwork. Hanako. 
That's the spirit referred to in the notice, right? I don't believe such a being exists in my school. Assuming the rumors are true, Hanako must refer to the tale of Hanako the toilet. And if you believe what the Noah said, I have a feeling this Hanako is being used by the Departed to attack the students. This whole thing is getting beyond absurd. A spirit is making another spirit attack, people. Are we in a fantasy world or something? <laughs> oh, you don't know, buddy. You don't know. I wonder where Izumi is. Dead. Based on Doryu's statement, I doubt he's in the special building in the new building. He's dead. Is there anywhere else? Let's see. The old building, I suppose. That place is basically abandoned, though. Nobody have a reason to sneak in there at night. Is it locked? At night, yes. During the day, it's open because it's been repurposed as a storeroom. Though for my choice to make, I'd rather keep it locked during the daytime as well. Given recent events... Oops. He pauses looking like he's accidentally let something slip. What happened in the old building? No comment. Does it have anything to do with this? Can you please just pay that no mind? It's a sensitive topic. Okay, we'll save my game. What should we explore next, Yashiki? You're not going to see the old building, are you? That's exactly what I was going to say, actually. Where else would you suggest? Oh, come on. It's locked. There's no way Izumi's in there. There's no point in going in there. I don't intend to snoop. I need to be sure he's not in there. You're a one stubborn fellow. Fine. This amateur shall yield to the opinion of the expert. Where do we go from here? The door in front of the music room leads to the corridor. Just go straight from there and you'll reach the old building. By the way, Yashiki. Do you have any weapons? Weapons? If we're dealing with spirits here... You must have some kind of talisman or holy water, right? Exorcists do usually carry those sorts of things. But I'm not an exorcist, so I don't have them. What an unreliable man. Huh, <laughs> fine. I'll give you this. The headmaster pulls out a small knife from a lever sheath. It's an antique silver knife with peonies decorating the grip. It looks like a valuable antique, though the blade is thin and doesn't seem like it'd be all that useful in the fight. No, but silver. My grandfather founded this school, and this knife is part of his collection. I kind of figured that based on your name. I heard it's supposed to be a talisman. Who knows? Maybe it'll work against spirits. You're pretty well prepared for someone who doesn't believe in the supernatural. That's just my personality. I don't believe, but there's no harm in being prepared just in case. Please take it with you. Should we do it with care, all right? It's a memento I received from my grandfather. Really need to work out. She lock us with students. Why? Oh no, maybe I have to. Uh... Where do I go? Oh. Spooky. This should be the corridor that connects the two buildings. I'm hearing that noise again. It's a squishy noise. The surrounding area is shrouded in darkness. I can't see clearly. There are no lights in either this corridor nor the old building due to the electrical issue. I procrastinate on getting it fixed because it wasn't causing any harm. But I regret that now. He shrugs. 
This investigation will rely heavily on your flashlight. I really wish she invested in like a cell phone. In the corridor, there's a path that leads outside. The back path leads to the sports field and clock tower, and the front path connects to the courtyard. So I'm gonna go over another little thing, well, after this. Someone is standing at the end of the corridor. Oh, you're alive! Wait, it just says male student, hold up. <sighs> My head is killing me! Standing there is a male student. He holds his head in pain while spitting curses. Are you Izumi? Huh? He responds and turns to us. Then he nods. Are you alright? Shall we take you to the infirmary? Just leave me alone. Ack. He groans painfully before sinking into silence. Looks like he finds it hard to even speak. So, I haven't deal with your situation before. I recommend you leave, buddy. <laughs> but I can't leave him alone. What should I do? Tell him about Doryu? Details. What happened? What are you doing in school this time of night? The student council president Doryu. Is looking for you. She's really worried. Apparently you told Doryu the departed is calling you. Ah, oh, now you're talking. Did you just say the departed? Yeah, I know about them. <laughs> he lets out a disturbing laugh. His squeaky voice not sounding remotely normal. You say the departed is hiding out in a school with the fun that one. They've disguised themselves as a human. You can't even tell they're not human. Enough with the jokes. They're not nothing but ridiculous rumors. They're a doll. Oh god. It's true. You know why I think so? Because I know who the part is. Oh yeah, you're dead. That's, if, if it doesn't happen now, it's gonna happen later. What? Who the hell is it? But it's too late now. I messed up. The Departed hates me. I keep hearing a voice saying, Die, 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 in my head. Get a grip, Izumi. Why do I have to suffer like this? Shit. Frack. Izumi is deeply perturbed. Our voices aren't getting through to him. Please calm down. We need your cooperation so we can help you. Shut up, shut up, shut all up! I got no fracking time left. I don't want to die. I could have gone to the music room and kill that Hanako bitch myself. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you're dead. Yeah. Izumi turns and runs back towards the old building. Izumi. But the music room. Does he mean the music room in the old building? Hold on. There was a music room there. Mm hmm. It's not used anymore, though. I glance down to the general area where Uzumi was standing, and something catches my eye. It looks like a knuckle duster. I didn't see this in his hand earlier, though. Did it fall out of his pocket? Maybe he brought it for self defense, since he's frightened by the departed. Why don't you keep it, Yashiki? Sure, just in case. All right, let's go. That's if we consult. Ah, oh, it's nothing really important. It's literally just a reminder. Why is this door open? It should have been locked in the evening. Who cares about that right now? Let's go inside. Well, the structure is quite similar to the new building, it gives off an entirely different vibe. The wall is written with mold and dust. Cobwebs are strung up here and there. Forget about clean. This place isn't even ventilated. God, this place is so muggy. 
Let's leave the door open. After you, Yashigi. I extend my hand toward the door. Huh? That's weird. Why won't it open? It can't be. The door won't budge no matter how many times I try to open it. What in the world is happening? Are we trapped in here? What happened, Yashiki? I'm not sure. But I can just kick the door down if push comes to shove. Finding Izumi is our priority for now. You have a point. The locations of the rooms are the same in both the new and old buildings. That means the music room is right beside us. Now I'm gonna just go to the left anyways. Okay. Can't. So anyway, I was gonna go into it real quickly. So, this series is pretty well known for its graphic scenes. And since I've uploaded the previous series, YouTube's environment and rules have changed quite a bit. So, in the event I think somebody's gonna run me in trouble with YouTube, or I do run into trouble with YouTube, which is a possibility, in the off chance this happens and I have to censor something or cut something or whatever, there will be a link down in the description of the video. I'll link to a, uh, my basically my roundabout solution is I will upload all the cut scenes or altered scenes or censored scenes or whatever to a specific video that I'll upload onto my Twitch channel in the VOD area. There's a, I'll make a playlist for it basically. That way in the event of a scene is compromised, you can kind of go and see the scene as it was intended. In fact, the game itself has a built-in censorship option. I didn't turn it on though. All right, let's go. The old building's music room is just ahead. I hear a voice coming from inside when I walk toward the door. Someone's dying. Stay away from me! Stop right there! Somebody help! Help! Hey, Yashiki. Let's go! Oh my god. My hand! Merely upon opening the door, we're greeted by a grisly sight. Filthy washing from rubber hose has taken Izumi's left hand. The rubber hose is undulating the air as if the gravity holds no power over us. The filthy water issuing forth from the hose is lashing out with menace, like a whip cracking through the air. There's no way a normal hose could contain a jet of water strong enough to dismember someone. Oh, I said that wrong. It, does, it, just, it just doesn't make any sense. Yet, that's precisely what my eyes are telling me is happening. I don't have the time to debate the possibility of this scene. Just gotta accept it. Just accept that this is an impossible phenomenon is real, and caused by haunting. Both the water and hose begin to coil up, growing taut with tension. Are they ready to hit him again? What are you doing, Izumi? Run! Izumi turns around when I yell at him. The water's next strike nearly misses him. A frantic Izumi rushes past me now in the music room. He's gonna go die somewhere else. The hose disappears into the darkness, as if it is pursuing him. What? What the hell was that? I don't know myself. Let's just save that for later. Now we have... Hmm? Why did I hear the sound of dripping water? Why is there water in the music room? God, not us now! The hose is wrapped around the headmaster's neck, as if they're trying to lift him up. This cannot be. Descending from the dark ceiling, hoses have snagged the headmaster by his neck. They're coiled like snakes of murderous intent. These, uh, hoses are gonna be used in a very specific way later, aren't they? When we get to the girl characters. If this keeps up, his life's in jeopardy. 
I need to get rid of these hoses immediately. So specific act will occur when encountering a special situation. By making the appropriate decision, you can drastically alter the outcome of a situation. Think of it as a moment of truth. There must be a tool I can use inside my bag. We need to do something real quick. But should I do it or... During sorts of act, you must first choose who's going to perform the action. Think carefully before making your decision. I mean, he's tied up. Like, he's barely able, so, like, I have to do it. Yes. Alright, what do we do next? I can use an item in a situation like... Yeah, just punch the hoses. Just, just knock him out. Now the knife. Mm. What do I do with this item, then? I've got to choose the most appropriate action in order to have the outcome I want. The character needs to have enough spirit to execute the action. Each action has a different execution rate. This will be explained in detail later. First, choose the action you want to do. Ah, see. So it, it they changed this. It's a chance-based thing now. And there's like uh This one costs more health. Just cut him. Alright. Here I go. I doubt anyone will be able to keep their cool in this situation. Panicking, feeling pressure. Those kinds of things can increase the chance of failure. Execution rate of failure. Doing successive acts, not every action is doable. Each action has an execution rate that is based on the person performing the action, so the stats do matter now. Your execution rate must be high enough for you to successfully perform the action. Are we gonna fail because it's tutorial? Using a knife, I try to cut the hose lifting the headmaster. God, that's scary. I cut the hose bit by bit. I think I can do it. The hose gradually rips apart. It finally breaks apart with a loud crack. I hardly sever the other hoses. The moment I finish cutting the last hose, my knife snaps. Damn. Somehow, I've survived. The headmaster has been freed from the hose's binding. Looks like this is the right choice. Yeah, you would think. The action you executed just now was correct. In the substance of act, you need to successfully execute the correct action. In situations where you succeed in performing an action but still fail to get your desired result, you should pick another option. You can also fail when you choose the wrong character. Try to choose the right person and the right action. Survived. Choose an action of high execution rate, second choose the correct action. And also times when suspense of act will be a multi-part event. Oh, I can't believe I never hang myself when I'm in their financial trouble. Hey, now bring bad luck. I'm glad you weren't injured. <laughs> My luck has always been good. Let's chase after Izumi now. Yashiki, look at the floor. It's a trail of blood. Given the amount, this has to be Izumi's blood. A trail leads to the entrance of the old building, where there's a big puddle of blood. The door looks like it's been painted red, with blood smeared all over the handle and windows. That's an unusual amount of blood. Izumi tried to run outside, except the door was locked. Is it still locked now? Putting some strength into the door, I attempted to push it open. Unlike the previous time, the door opens without any resistance at all. There are no traces of blood to be seen outside. Izumi's still in the building. Judging by the amount of blood, Izumi's probably... Uh, one question though, Yashiki. Where is he? No idea, but we should find him if we follow the trail. I turn my eyes down the corridor. Fresh glistening blood extends deep into the darkness. 
Can I, can I actually just leave? I can. Izumi. Are you in the bathroom? Miller's room is just up ahead and the trail blood doesn't lead there. You never know. Of course you went to the Hanako bathroom. The word annoying is written in red on the mirror. Who are they referring to? This doesn't look like blood. Wait. We have to be consistent. We gotta investigate every single toilet. The do toilet bowl is dirty. It's obvious it hasn't been cleaned for quite a while. This place is so dirty. It obviously hasn't been used in a long time. Oh, there's something here. I find a pale pink handkerchief on the ground. It's an elegant, expensive looking item. The initials NH are embroidered on the edge. There's some ink on the cloth. A faint, irritating odor is coming from it. Smells like acidic detergent. I'm guessing it's toilet cleaner. They try to erase the writing over there. Curious. Mm -hmm. There's a scribble on the wall. You suck a piano, stop showing off. Don't play the school song. Wow. The name ran on, but so faint it's unreadable. This is obviously slander. Just like the stuff we found in the new building. I wonder who they're bullying. Hanako, maybe? Speaking of piano. Izumi is a pianist. Does this have anything to do with him? Hmm. Empty like my soul. I haven't found anything I can use as a weapon. I'm a bit worried about that since my knife broke. At least this toilet stall. Are you there, Izumi? He's dead. There's no response. I think he's already. It's not locked. Should I? The headmaster doesn't reply. Instead, he nods warily, a dazed look on his face. Gripping the handle, I slowly push the door open. No, oh, it's nothing. Ah. Huh. The blood leads inside the stall. It does no sign of Izumi. How can this be? This is absurd. Maybe he's... not on... Is he above us? The headmaster's plaintive query goes unanswered. I totally understand his feelings. However, no amount of whining will make the situation make sense. Let's examine this restroom. I find a fresh blood stain. It's probably Izumi, since he was just attacked by hoses. If he's lost that amount of blood, I doubt he's alive. Still alive, technically, but... What? All of a sudden, a shrill scream pierces the night. What was that? It came from the hallway. What was that sound? It sounded like something squeezing. Like hoses. I hear something creeping from the hallway near the classrooms. Ah. A female voice. A hollow moan so faint it could disappear at any moment. Oh no. Wait, must investigate everything. Yep. Yep. I warned you. It was that girl, Himiko Doryu. The set before me was beyond comprehension, an otherworldly scene. A girl drenched in sewage water, suspended by a bunch of rubber hoses. 
filthy water and rubber hoses, just like the assault in Izumi. Countless hoses sway in the air. They look like venomous snakes arching their necks into sickles, intimidating their prey. Pain groans emerge from her lips. Damn. I have to hurry and save her. I extend my hand toward the hoses, trying to grab her. And at that moment, the hoses just disappear. She drops down onto the floor limply. But it's not just the hoses that have vanished. The yellow water that drenched her body and stained her blouse is completely gone too. No traces remain. As if the entire scene we just witnessed was nothing but an illusion. Are you the cause of this curse? Hey, are you alright? Doryu doesn't respond. She's fainting. What on earth just happened? No time to question anything. Let's get her to the infirmary. I carry Doryu on my back and pick up her blazer from the floor. We hurry to the infirmary. Once there, we lay her down on the bed. Though she's unconscious, her breathing is steady. She should be fine now. Let's continue our investigation. We haven't found Izumi yet. Mr. Konoi. Huh? Uh, apologies. My mind is a bit fuzzy after all those bizarre happenings one after another. Bizarre? Not bizarre, it's just murder. You can just wait here if it's too much for you. No, I cannot. I must protect the school or else I'm going to bring shame upon my grandfather. He smiles weakly. It's obvious that he's forcing it. He's propped up his resolve with a sense of responsibility to his grandfather, the founder of the school. Fine, alright. Let's head to the old building. Doryu's lying down on the bed, still unconscious. I know you're worried about her, but Izumi is our priority right now. Let's head back to the old building, Yashiki. Is this Chris's blood? Say, Yashiki. Should we check the female restroom again? We pretty much looked through every corner. But we still haven't found Izumi. You saw that trail of blood, right? He must be in there. The must feels hysterically. He's clearly tense and overwhelmed. He's nearly reached his limit, both mentally and physically. Okay, we'll give the restroom another look. It's not like we have any other leads anyway. Search for Izumi. You pursued us through an Izumi who'd gone missing. I saw his name on a post in the music room. He was badly hurt when we found him in the old building's music room, but he went missing again after. We followed the trail of his blood. It ended in the girl's restroom where we found red graffiti and a handkerchief. Someone apparently scared him and he seemed to be running from them. My gut told me he had to do with what was written on the notice. What actually happened in that restroom? We might be able to learn what caused Hanako the toilet to attack Izumi. We need to inspect that bloodstained door again. They have water running. It sounds like running water. Where in the world is that coming from? It's not coming from there. You're, uh, in here now, aren't you? Oh my god! Inside the stall, Mill students on the toilet seat. A bundle of things are sprouting from his eyes. Slender, rubber hoses. They're spewing filthy water in every direction. Guess that explains the sound of running water. Between all the blood, the fallen eyeballs, and the hoses, I'd be unable to tell what his poor kid looked like while he was alive. Though there was one pretty obvious clue as to his identity. His left hand's missing. This must be the Toshi... 
Toshi Hiko Izumi. His wide open mouth gives an idea of just how much pain he'd endured. He probably had his eyes pushed out. Oh my god. Inside by the hoses while he was still alive. Looking at the pool of blood. But where did the hoses enter through? Oh no. Looking at the pool of blood surrounding his body from a severed wrist, though, his suffering and terror probably didn't last too long. That's about the only bit of luck he'd have tonight. What's wrong, Yashiki? What in the world is in there? You don't want to look. Yep. The headmaster screams and bolts out of the restroom. Guess that's finally what pushed him past the edge of sanity. I honestly can't blame him. I'm too shocked to think straight myself. Better get out of this restroom first. Return to the infirmary and come up with a plan. I walk toward the exit. Legs trembling. Ah, there's that noise. Huh? I can't lift my legs. Something is tangled around my ankle. A long, thin, elastic blue something. It's the rubber hose. Hanako! I look into the mirror and see something swaying. What is that? A person. It's a girl in a wet shirt and red suspender skirt. Her limbs blacken. She looks dead, swaying from side to side. This is... Hanako of the toilet. Hoses crawl up around my waist, to my chest, all the way around my neck. Ah! No, not like this! This- this is really- this is really sus! I can't move my limbs. Even my mouth is bound. Especially that part. I'll be killed at this rate. Shut. As if I just let that happen. My arm's the only thing I can someone move at the moment. Act 1. The graffiti is so cruel. Kill the one who wrote it. The words being on her mouth are filled with the rage. Looks like she thinks I was the one who wrote that thing on the mirror. The hoses are constricting me tighter. If I don't do something, I'll die here. There must be something in my bag that I can use to survive. Quick action choices give me some insight. Narrow down your choices. Dirty handkerchief. Put in front of the hole. What's that gonna do? Wipe off the graffiti. Yosh. Yosh. I pull the dirty handkerchief from my bag and extend my hand toward the mirror. Come on, come on, come on! What? Unfortunately, I can't quite reach it. Damn XCOM odds. Looks like she thinks I was the one who wrote that thing. Well, the odds went up. I pull the dirty handkerchief. Now, if you lose this, that's some real XCOM odds. Thank God. I might be able to clip the misunderstanding by wiping off the writing with the handkerchief. I stretch the handkerchief toward the mirror. Then, I wipe off the word annoying. The hose binding my shoulders loosens slightly. Did that clear up the misunderstanding? I might have managed to convince her that I'm not a bad person by erasing those awful words. I think this is the right choice. I feel like I can move my arm a bit more now. Yes, I'm not a bully. What does she mean by not bully? Was this girl bullied in the past? Oh, I don't know. 
Who am I? Did she just say, who am I? The girl screams out loud. Ugh. The host cinches the tight right on my body. But I look really sexy while this is going on. Shit, what do I do now? So at least that's part, it's okay. The girl seems pissed because she doesn't know who she is. Because I need to tell her that next. Red marker. Hanako. Koenedora. I stretch my hand toward the mirror and try to write Hanako Akai with the red marker. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I exert maximum effort and somehow manage to get the marker close to the mirror. I begin writing. Hanako Akai. This is the name of the female pianist written on the poster. Toyo said she is the Hanako of the Toilet, though she was probably referring to the classic urban legend Hanako the Toilet and not the school's Hanako. The girl who was bullied might be Hanako Akai. Or all the ghosts could be like kids who were bullied. The hose binding me finally loosens. I assume she remembers her name now. You are different. The girl then disappears into the darkness. Makes me wonder if Hanako the toilet forgives me now that she pulled herself together. Looks like this is the right choice. Survived. <laughs> what the heck? Once Hanako's presence is gone, the restroom changes completely. There's no trace of the hoses nor the blood. As if nothing foul ever happened here. We're not done with her yet. Wait. No way. Izumi's corpse is no longer in the stall. So I took him to the other world, spirited away. No one is inside. Even the hoses and water are gone. The same as what happened to Doryu. It's as if everything was only a nightmare. That means we lost any evidence of this incident. The only thing remaining is the fact that a student named Tosh Toshihiko Izumi has disappeared. The cops will probably just treat him as one of the thousands of missing people, exactly as they did with the student mentioned in the first notice. In this case, cops will be useless. You're gonna need a paranormal cop. What should I do? I better go back to the infirmary first. The headmaster may have returned there. After talking with him, we can decide what we should do next. <laughs> we found Izumi's mangled corpse in the rest girl's restroom. He'd been brutally murdered. Right after that, we encountered a female spirit with murderous intent. Due to her resemblance to Hanako the toilet, we thought she was a spirit from the notice. After we survived her attack, we learned her name was Hanako Akai. It seems Hanako was bullied in the past. Maybe the real reason she became a spirit was tied to the bullying. Izumi's death may point to that. Unfortunately, his corpse has disappeared without trace. It seems like I've got some fear-filled days ahead of me. Just press Q. The headmaster is indeed in the firm infirmary. He's talking of Doryu. I should tell him what happened. You're back, Yashiki. No thanks to you. I'm so sorry about earlier. I was so shocked I ran away before I knew what was happening. Right. Oh yes, Doryu is woken up. I told her about you and how you saved her life. Come on, Doryu. Thank the gentleman. Thank you, Mr. Yashiki. Feeling better now. Yeah, more or less. Um, how about Izumi? Oh, uh... I... don't think you want to see him. Oh, well... 
Looks like the headmaster hasn't broken the news to her. He's probably concerned about her mental state. There's something I want to ask her, though. We can't hide it forever. Alright. Let me tell you all the things I've gone through tonight. And that's it. It must be hard to swallow, I know. But you're gonna have to believe me. It can't be. Izumi's been murdered. Don't you sinks into silence after that. It's incredible that you've survived an encounters like this against vicious spirits before, Yashiki. I hope you'll forgive me, but I found you to be quite dubious before. But I guess I made the right choice by asking for your help. You saved us. He looks at me, a faint, tired smile settling on his lips. Izumi's been killed, just as the notice said. Doryu murmurs quietly. If you get too curious about the Depart's true identity, you'll be targeted and killed by them. The rumor seems to be true, after all. The voice trembles slightly. Is she shocked by the death of her friend, or is she scared of the Departed? Seeing her trouble, I... Reassure her. There's indeed something in this school. But don't worry. The headmaster and I are both here. I know. Thank you for everything. Excuse me. Who? Huh. A young girl enters the room all of a sudden. You're not a doll, are you? Your hair is dyed white. Which begs the question, does this school have really lax guidelines and appearance? There you are, Hime. I've been looking for you. Did you find Izumi? He's all tied up right now. What's wrong, Hime? Who are you? Michiho Kinukawa, the student council's vice pres and Hime's friend. Both of you should go home. It's really late already. We'll do something about Izumi. Understood. Let's go home, Michio. Okay. I guess that's it for tonight. The headmaster and Doryu probably don't want to tell Michio about what happened to Izumi. Let me drive you home. I wouldn't be able to look at your parents in the eye if something would happen to you. There's no need for that. We both live in the dorm. It's only a minute away from here. Oh no, we broke the curfew though. Doorman is gonna scold us real bad. I'll let them know then. Be careful on your way home. We'll be going then. That mark is really suspicious. Doryu bids us farewell and leaves the Michiho. You must be tired too, Yashiki. Go home. I'll call you again later to talk about the case. Mr. Konoe. Or is it like Konoe or Konoe? Konoe or Konoe? Don't know. I want some time alone now. Please go home. Guess I'll head back. My car is parked in the lawn near the main gate. The moment I exit the special building, the door locks behind me. I walk toward the shoe lockers, figuring I can leave that way. A free spirit, Konoe Hara, second year with the white hair. She's a friend of Himiko's and the student council vice president. She loves insects and has insect-shaped accessories. Uh, no, not the fact that she likes insects, but just like, I see how they're going to take advantage of that. She's very smart and has strong supernatural sense. She's going to end up being a party member though, for sure. As soon as they brought supernatural sense, like yeah. Donnie? Just then, I spot a piece of paper on the floor. It wasn't here earlier. A short sentence in red letters is written on it. Dear visitor, I'll be waiting for you in the corridor. Yours truly the departed. This is... My visitor. Do they mean me? 
Are they? They said they'd be waiting in the connecting corridor. I may be able to get closer to learning the Depart's true identity if I go. Except that's no different than running into the jaws of death. I can still turn my back on my fears and run away. All I have to do is go outside through the exit by the shoe lockers. So the question is, should I face my fear, or should I avoid it? In that case... Who's there? Ah! Where's this bell sound coming from? Ah, my head! What? Are you? A strange figure standing in the darkness. A lanky slender body with a naturally big head. No way. That's... The Departed. There's gonna be more another twist to this. That's not gonna be what... A little too, like... Obvious. It's a sort of laughter I hear right now. They set their sights on me. Are they... Laughing? I can feel the warmth of my body slowly leaving. Just from them staring at me. If this keeps up, I'm in serious danger. I've got to escape right here, right now. But I... I can't. I'm petrified. My legs won't even tremble. The Depart vanishes suddenly. Did I... make it? They're behind me. On this wonderful day, and this exchange of house with one another, a faint crackling voice echoes in my mind. I swear to always stay by your side, forever and ever. What are you saying? Hey, my dear. No! Chapter 1. The Pardon. So, that's it for Death Mark 2 Part 1. Now, if you watched this one, and you haven't seen the Ever series, and you got some time to kill, I definitely recommend watching Death Mark 1, and then... Spirit Hunter NG, which is the sequel. The reason this is called Death Mark 2 because this is a more direct sequel to the original because it contains the same main character, although he does appear in the second one in some form. But we can kind of see by the end of this chapter that there is the reoccurring theme. It's it's in all the chapters, uh, or each of the games, rather. There's always an encounter at the start that kind of puts a timeline, like some sense of urgency into our main character where they are forced to encounter these things, and if they don't solve the situation, something bad is going to happen to them. And I can already see, kind of like Spirit Hunter NG, which stepped, you know, the uh, the bad outcomes for people up, Death Mark II is in that same style, if not maybe more so, we'll see. So, video-wise, how we're going to probably do this is, I think we're going to try to do a chapter or a video, unless they're extremely long and it pushes past the four-hour mark or something. And there's no guarantee they'll come out after right after each other. I might do like another game or something in between each one to also give people who don't like this game a chance to kind of watch something. But yeah, we'll go to completion. If there's any issues with YouTubes of any episodes or bad ends or anything, we'll do like what I just said, where I'll just put the censorship on and then I'll link down to a uh, clip that shows that scene without it. And that's probably gonna how I'm going to handle most videos or series where that occurs from now on. But anyway, storyline-wise, we don't really know enough yet to commentate too much. But I'm looking forward to it. It's more Deathmark. It's always been a very solid series. Anyway, thank you for watching me play part one. Stay tuned for part two. But I'll see you guys later and take it easy.